No. Alright. Uh, Fermat's theorem. Okay, I know it looks like Fermat. It's Fermat. Okay, Fermat's theorem. Uh, he was a very famous mathematician. He came up with a lot of stuff. If you've ever watched the movie Proof, um, it's about proving Fermat's last theorem. Which I think we feel like we're doing a big debate over it. Um, I think it's Jeff Gillen. It was all oh, yeah. 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 Uh, nice. No, but it's Jeff Gillen that you know. But it's pretty good. It is. So his theorem says that relative extrema occur only at critical numbers. Okay, we talked yesterday about critical numbers. How do we find critical numbers? Set the derivative equal to zero, or where the derivative is zero or undefined. Zero or undefined. Okay, that's where critical numbers occur. Um, what his uh, <coughs> theorem says is that your relative extrema, maxes and mins, can only happen at critical numbers. Okay, so if f of x is a local number max, then c is a critical number of f of x. Um, note, his theorem does not claim that all critical points are maxes and mins. Okay, just because it's a critical point doesn't mean that it's necessarily a max or min. It means it could be, it's a candidate, but it is not for sure a max or a minimum. False positives may exist, which means you may find that f prime of c equals zero, but f of c is not a local min or a max. For example, f of x equals x cubed has the derivative 3x squared, and f prime of zero equals zero, but if you look at the graph, f of zero is not a max or a minimum. Okay? f of zero is not a max or a minimum, even though the derivative is um, equal to zero, at zero. Okay. No, it's going to make it happen. You're still going to have points. This is going to be less. No, like you look at it, like it's still not people. On the y. First and fourth quadrants. Oh, as you say, you cut it off. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, but it, it's but we're talking about relative meaning. It's it's a peak or a value. Right. It's actually a peak or a value. So um, let's look at guidelines for finding extrema on a closed interval. Okay. You want to start by finding your critical numbers on your interval. Okay, find your critical numbers on your interval. You want to evaluate your function at the critical number, meaning you want to find the y value. Okay. Then, this is the part everyone forgets, and I'm not going to lie, I forget sometimes too. You need to evaluate the function at your endpoints because of what we're getting ready to look at. Um, the least of those values is your minimum, and then, of course, the greatest is the maximum. So here's why we have to check our endpoints. If we have a function here, and I don't think this is graphed on the paper, you probably want to add it. Okay, this is just some function. I don't know what the function is. This is the graph that I am given. So whenever I take the derivative of this function and set it equal to zero, what are our critical points? Or critical numbers? C and D. But obviously, they're C and D. That's where our derivative is equal to zero. C is a minimum. D is a maximum. Okay? <clears throat> F of C is 1. F of D is 4. <clears throat> but those are not necessarily our absolute minimum and absolute maximum values. We have to consider our endpoints. If we look at the endpoints of this interval, F of A is higher and this maximum. So even though it's a relative or a local maximum, it is not the maximum value on this interval. The maximum value on this interval is f of a, which is 6. Um, f of b is 3. That doesn't really influence anything here. Okay, so evaluate the critical numbers. 1 and 4. Evaluate the endpoints, 6 and 3. And then we pick out well, which one's the greatest, which one's the least. So obviously the least is 1. Okay, so f of c, or c is where the minimum occurs. So that's the absolute min. On this interval, 
f of a equals 6 is the absolute max on this interval. If we change the interval, those answers may change. Okay, if we change this interval, those answers may change. Um, if I move a closer to c, okay, so like a moved over here, and my function stopped right there, what would then become my absolute max? D would be where the maximum would be if I move A. Um, if I move B over here and this function continues to decrease, what would then become the absolute minimum? B. Okay, B. Not C because B is now lower than C. Do y'all see what I'm talking about here? Okay. The, the interval is what affects this. It can change. For the same function, it can change. Yes, C and D are still relative or local mins and maxes, yes, okay, uh, but on an interval they may not be the absolute min or max. Alright, so let's do this. Let's find the extrema of this function on the interval from negative 1 to 2. Okay, now in this case when it says extrema it wants the absolutes. Okay, wants the absolutes. So first of all, we need to find our critical uh, critical numbers. All right. So critical numbers take the derivative. Twelve x cubed minus twelve x squared. Set it equal to zero. Well, I'm going to factor at the same time. So it has a GCF of twelve x squared. So when I factor that, I'm left with x minus 1. So that means I have two, two critical numbers. 12x squared is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0 is one of them. x equals 1 is the other. Those are our critical numbers. You may want to label those. Those are potentially the minimums and maximums of this function on this interval. So let's find out. We need to plug in our critical numbers into our original function. We need to plug in our endpoints into the original. We want the actual y values. Okay, so when I plug in 0, what's the result? 0. When I plug in 1, we've got uh, 3 minus 4, so that's negative 1. When I plug in negative 1, negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1, so that's 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so that's plus 4, so that result is 7. And when we plug in 2, ooh, let's see here, 2 to the 4th is 16, 3 times 16 is 4. 48, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, so that's 16. So our absolute min on this interval is what? 1, negative 1. Okay, it occurs at 1 and the value is negative 1. The absolute max on this interval is to 16. Okay. Now, these are going to be calculator inactive questions on the real exam, but at this moment you have your calculator at your disposal. You can always check this. You can graph that function, change your x min to negative 1, your x max to positive 2, and look at it. Okay, You can see whether you did it correctly or not. All right. Let's look at a function like this. f of x is equal to 2x minus 3x to the 2 thirds. And our interval is from negative 1 to 3. So critical numbers come from the derivative equal to 0. The derivative of our function f prime of x is 2 minus... Hmm, let's see here, 3 times 2 thirds is 2. 
subtract one from your exponent. Are you okay with me doing that? You're not going to freak out on me. Okay. <clears throat> so, that is our derivative. We need to set it equal to zero. Uh, and solve. So I'm going to add the 2x to the negative one-third to the other side to make it positive. Divide by 2. That means we're equal to 1. And how do we get rid of a negative one-third power? Now remember, raise it to the reciprocal. Raise it to the negative third. So that's x is equal to 1 to any power is what? 1. 1 to any power is 1. So we have one critical number. x equals 1. So we need to check f of 1. We need to check f of negative 1. We need to check f of 3. Critical number and endpoints. So let's hear f of 1 would be 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. F of negative 1 would be negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. The cube root of 1 is 1, so that's minus 3, so that's negative 5. And let's see here. 3 would be 6 minus 3 times the cube root of 9. 3 squared power of a root, so 3 squared, the cube root of 3 squared. Um, not quite sure what that number is. So I do need to use my calculator to approximate so I can compare it <coughs> to the others. 6 minus 3 uh, cube root of 9. Negative point approximately negative 0.24. So in this case, our absolute min is negative 1, negative 5. What's our absolute max? 3, uh, 6 minus 3 cube roots of 9. Now, uh, that looks a little fishy to me, so this is definitely one that I would check. I'm going to graph it, and I apologize, we were doing exponential models in pre-calc. Uh, 2x minus 3x to the 2 thirds, and I'm going to adjust my window, my intervals from negative 1 to 3, and my answers were from negative 5 to, they were all negative, so I'm going to go uh, negative 7 to 2, just to be on the safe side. I'm going to graph it and look at it. Okay, so really weird looking function here, but clearly, yes, our minimum is over here at negative 1, and... See, there's the local max at, wait. Hmm. Oh, my hit zero. Oh, because I forgot something. Mm-hmm. I forgot that, um, that negative exponent, okay, that negative exponent throws a kink in things. <clears throat> so negative exponents, remember we can express those in the denominator. And we also have critical numbers where the derivative is undefined, the derivative is going to be undefined, where the denominator is equal to zero, or where the x to the one third would be equal to zero, when x is zero. I forgot one. Okay, so any time, okay, any, and this is why I put this example, and then I forgot what I 